This is our midweek encounter, our midweek connection. I'm excited again, another week. Here's what I want you to pay attention to. That our victory is in Christ Jesus alone. And all of you who are in, who are in Christ Jesus, I want you to know, you pay very close attention to this week because this week uh, it's a reminder that each and every one of us will experience sadness in our lives and after you experience sadness in your life if sadness is not taken care of it's, it's, it lingers i just want you if you don't turn to anything many people don't you know they're afraid of sadness and they will turn to something very quick to make them feel good uh, but if you don't really take care of it depending on who and what you turn to you may experience even deeper side sadness which could turn into uh, depression and then if you end, end up in psychology we have what we call major depression which is if you, uh, your depression lasts longer than six months and, and you've, you uh, have several symptoms don't use this as a diagnosis okay it says well it's been six months I'm not trying to diagnose anybody okay I'm just letting you know this is how it's the criteria and but I just want you to understand after a while it will become deplorable and the feeling will be so and then it'll be it'll turn into despair you know what despair is it's hopelessness you have feel no hope have you ever heard somebody that you thought that was so cool and fun and 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 have money have it all gone and then all of a sudden you hear in the news this person is gone they killed themselves i want you to know that's what happened they came to that stage hopelessness when you have nothing to live for you don't want to live and you don't care if you live and uh, but you, it's because you don't know any better but so the entire week we, we if you don't have this guide and you're going through things I hope you pay very close attention to that I'm gonna give you a number at the end and then you'll be able to connect with us and you'll have the guide and you'll be able to go through scriptures after scriptures and topics after topics for example this is what we saw at first the first day we talked about how uh, every human being can be weak but God is still God you know God never changes but you're gonna see that you experience some some kind of weakness in your life and again that could turn into some kind of sadness and so on and so forth okay but that's that's the whole idea the whole idea is I just want you to know there was no reason for any of you watching this right now to ever come to that stage of hopelessness but guess what sometimes it'll feel like it but I want you to you know put your foot on the brake right there whenever you start feeling like it I just want you to know there is another way that's not the only way and so I'm gonna read a passage that help you see what I'm talking about what I'm referring to we're gonna really abbreviate everything except I'm gonna allow you to have the guide so you could see and then I'm gonna use a particular passage I think that was one of the greatest possibility for despair for hopelessness and yet I want you to see because God had his fingerprints in it and hopefully you understand that God has his fingerprints in your life if you turn to him but sometimes when you turn away from him he said okay I'm gonna let you go that's what you want to do you know and that's why you see so many people hanging loose all over the place today because God said I'm gonna let you go I'm gonna let you do your own thing and then you realize I don't want it to be too late for you because sometimes it does come to that intersection where you know you've already done so much damage that it's, it's, it's so hard to come back sometimes almost impossible nothing is impossible to God but I'm telling you some of the choices you may make could cause it to become to that to that point where you know God allow things to take its own course and then he take his hands off of it because that's what you wanted to do that was your choice but listen to what the passage say okay in Jeremiah 
uh, chapter, you know, in uh, Isaiah, I'm sorry, Jer I love Jeremiah. Isaiah chapter 40, listen to what it says in verse uh, 31. I'm only just going to read one verse. It says, but does. Whenever you say but does, it's, it's changing direction. And it was talking about earlier, if you read it in the context, how even young men, they, they, they become weak. Even young men and young ladies, you know, people who really supposed to be at, uh, you know, the most grace, I mean, perfect time of their life where they strong, they, they um, energetic, and uh, they, they have all kind of uh, strength, and they're powerful, you know, and nobody can tell them anything. They can move anything they want. They can do anything. Young men, they could also stumble and fall. Young ladies, they could stumble and fall. But I want you to hear, here's the direction. It says, but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. In other words, you can be weak, but your strength can be renewed. Anybody needs their strength renewed? You're exhausted because of some stuff in your life? Maybe some project you, you undertake and then it causes um, a lot of issue. And for some of you, it could be a relationship that you're in. That, that, this thing exhausts you. But I want you to understand, no matter what it is, your workplace, uh, your home, a marriage, whatever could exhaust you, whatever could take away from you, your strength listen to what it says but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength they will soar on wings like eagles they will run and not grow weary and they will walk and not be faint you see so there is another way there was always going to be another way. I want you to say that to yourself say there is another way I want you to say that again there is another way I really want you to say it like you mean it. There is another way. And that other way is God is the one who provided it and who make it right. And you know why I say that? There was a, there was a man in the Bible, a story named, uh, this man named Job. And Job, the, the biggest, the greatest calamity that could fall on mankind fell on Job. There was really nothing ever recorded like this before in the Bible. But he lost his children, he lost his, um, and then, I mean, everything he owned. And this was a rich man. Could you imagine the stock market hit, and then some people lose a couple of thousand dollars, and then all of a sudden they're ready to commit suicide. They're ready to, I mean, it, things happen, you know? They go crazy, they go ballistic on everybody. And there was no chain that can hold them together, you know, that could hold them down. But, but here's a man who lost everything. And here's, well, that's what the title for today's, uh, you know, lesson or activity is, because every day we have an activity. I call it activity, I call it a Bible passage, I call it a Bible challenge where you would learn and here's what you would learn and today that's so our Wednesday says that be careful that Satan and others meaning that and a lot of other stuff right don't cause you to turn your back on God because circumstances have a way to turn your back on God and here's the reason why I say that I'm gonna close right now but I really want you to hear this I talked about Job right but here's what happened you see how Satan, in Job chapter 1, verse 9 to 11, his goal was to make him turn his back on God. That's what he wanted to do. And then, poor Job's wife. I mean, the wife, could you imagine a wife watching all of seven children died in one day? Something fell on them, all of a sudden, earthquake fall and then the house fell on them and none of them survived 
Can you imagine a wife like this right now? She has nothing left. I know we could be pointing finger, I understand. You know, she should be a woman of God like her, her husband because the Bible says Job was a man of integrity and God saw him. And then, uh, so the second uh, thing that caused, that wanted Job to turn his back on God is his wife, his own wife. The closest thing he, ha he has, you know, because the wife couldn't handle herself so she didn't even know how to support Job. So he says, forget this God thing. And you know, I, I can't imagine so many people that I've met along the way that left the church, that left Christianity. Uh, I mean, they were checking it out. I didn't say they were a Christian. They left Christianity because they were just checking it. And then Satan wins because he gives them something that stuck in their throat and they said, man, that's too much. If that's what Christianity is, I don't think I can handle it. But what they don't realize is there was nothing better than what God himself offers. And so, you see, Satan tried to make his um, turn, uh, cause Job to turn his back, okay? His wife um, tried to make him to turn his back. And guess what? The actual circumstances and things happen after things. And then I want you to read that in Job uh, 1, uh, 12 to 22. When you read the different things that happened to him, this would cause him to just turn his back on God. But that's not what happened. And then I want you to learn that. If you have the guide, I'm going to kindly turn you into the guide. In Job 1, 8, you see that God vowed. I mean, he, I mean, he vouched for, for, for Job. He said, man, I'm telling you, you could touch anybody. But this man, he will not turn his back. And so he saw something in Job. Let me ask you, what does God see in you? Do you know that you have that same ability to be a person of integrity? One who loves God. One who devoted to God. Where God out of everybody could pick you out and say, you know this person, this person is dead serious about me. And that's really what God is seeking. And when you do, when you go through difficulty, guess who's going to make sure that you're rescued? Almighty God. He says, well, it doesn't always happen like that. Well, that's what Job would say. That's what Job's wife would say. That's what when his friends came and say, they say, okay? But guess what? God was still at work. See, you know, you must trust God to the end. That's why I will leave this with you. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. May your strength be renewed, be renewed today, no matter what you have just gone through or what you're going to go through in the future. May God give you something or this, His Word, to hang on. May God bless you. Let me pray with you. And as I pray, I'm going to give you this number. Why don't you uh, just put hope? If you need the guide, you don't have the guide, just write hope in this number. 4954-446-75. 3, 3, 4, 4, 6, 7, 5, 3, 3. Let me pray for you, okay? God, we thank you so much for this time to know that, Father, there is no case that is hopeless, that, that can cause us to ultimately to be hopeless because of what provision you made for us. God, may we turn to you just as Job turned to you every time. He says, I know my Redeemer lives. In spite of everything, he still knew about you. God, may we know so much of you, God, that no matter what our circumstances are, we will never turn away from you. We try, and if there is someone who's struggling with that right now, help them to turn to your word, God, and help give them a day of victory. We trust you. We depend on you. It is in Jesus Christ's name, our Savior and our Lord, we pray and thank you. Amen.